just launching yeah. uh, fun yeah. but i think one of the things you know i was thinking about when you were talking about it is that people launch funds every day you know that's the job of a fund is to give you another opportunity to get your money in and then yeah. and, uh, and funds have become almost like um, value system ecosystems right so mm-hmm. it's like you believe in this you put in this you want yeah. to do international markets right, you can right, do right. this so you want to, to have africa okay you can buy a fund that so. has a little bit of that uh it this if it hadn't been treated the way you know your team and you did it would have been another fund right but but you kind of the fact that this was a fund that was called she yeah. this is a fund that was happening on wall street which is so full of he's that she kind right. of hardly makes any you know yeah. uh, any much of her an uproar so i think the fact that this was not just another fun and not just another fun the kind of funds that get launched out of wall street and the fact that you didn't treat it like the launch of another fun i think kind of almost came together in a perfect storm mm-hmm. is what i was thinking right yeah. so it made the conversation bigger than just the fun it was more about finance industry wall street right. women you know yeah. leadership roles money power like it really changed the conversation yeah uh in some ways with this defined girl who was smiling like she wasn't looking like she was going to fight she yeah. just was like all right yeah. i'm up for you yeah. you know so it was and i think her age was important too i think how old is she um i don't know if there's an exact sort of age kind of under 10 i would say is my say eight. Yeah. Yeah, eight yeah, is, yeah 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 um but it's it's more about kind of an optimistic view into the future yeah um and you know which is why she's not white she, exactly she's sort of hispanic yes. and um so sort of her outfit and her look are modeled to be kind of timeless so that and very common place yeah so she yeah. was not going to be dated by what she was wearing yeah. um and i you know i think also at that point too not only was it international women's day but we were kind of hitting a point where there was a lot of yeah kind of gloom and yeah. uncertainty and yeah. you know everyone trying to leave the country <laughs> and the news cycle i mean i maybe now we're just used to it but it just becomes so onerous that yes. this kind of positive spark of defiant yes friendly defiance yes. and optimism and looking beyond the moment of yeah. oh well, that's it so like yeah. i think just that struck an, an amazing chord and then because international women's day that year was this point this flash point of yeah. change and we can make change happen and i'm going to get off the couch and go to washington and actually be there yeah again just that that yeah. was just even though 100 people would tell you but what is it going to achieve you're going to be on the road and you're going to be walking yeah. but what is it going to achieve like yeah. i heard that so much it 2 years a, ago yeah. but what are you going to achieve by just marching i mean what is it going to change yeah. and know? it was and, it, and there was a you know i the women's march organization itself has had some sort of, sort of bumps in the road in terms of who started it and this and that but it's still like the spirit in 2017 was yeah. like not tainted by the world because the world yeah. always yeah puts road you know the things change once they're once they've been born they lose their yeah fresh new born yeah which is there for all the more reason that I was upset today because 2 years ago we created the fearless girl right uh today you were part of the team that gave the fearless girl i think if i was to put it right from a consumer perspective right i would say you gifted us the fearless girl you know you gifted us all that she stood for and the moment was right because there was a wave that that had to be ridden at that moment yeah. and she kind of captured in a world where you think nothing can change and everything was doomed you can still make a difference right. and it's okay to renew hope and start yeah. and you know that morning sun again right yeah, yeah. uh to where for example it is today you know it's almost like the conversation has come down hell right uh in some ways uh it almost seems to be the path of the advertising industry right because it looks like the advertising landscape is changing uh all the heads of advertising agencies that I've spoken to really don't know what they're doing and if they want to do something independently i think the holding companies are so strict 
that there is very little. It almost sounds like the kind of regulations you had to launch the Fearless Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Um, and as someone who has worked in New York, you know, Gemma, uh, I'd love, uh, but comes from outside the US, I'd love your perspective on what's happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. especially with WPP and everything. And so, yeah. what's your take on? What's going on in this industry? Do you see a future? Yeah, I think it's it's such an interesting topic because I mean, you know, both of us have been in the space and the discussion around oh, the demise of the agency is yeah. like rumbling on for twenty five like years. years. <laughs> yeah, and it's like okay, so the day, you know, the, are you dead yet? <laughs> yeah, um, and but yet the size of the agency business is such that there's there's still an enormous industry yeah. yet to me you know how i see the change is the the model yeah. has shifted and because there isn't a predictable um what was the model earlier according to you because there's so many every yeah. every agency had its own model so. so it's kind of the the model in the bigger agencies is around kind of the large annual retainer with a big you know client typically yeah. global um, who's been with you for 30 40 years exactly and you've developed these kind of iconic campaigns and yeah the you know the every year the client will give you money and a lot yeah. of money and it's like spend it and do these things and yeah. it's not you don't have to repitch every time you yeah. a project comes up yeah. whereas now um, clients don't want to allocate one lump sum of money to one yeah. place for various different reasons I was going to ask you why do you think that is well I think it's down to the kind of dynamics of business it's down to where marketing budgets held on the yeah. client side I also think it's down to the shifting way in which consumers consume consumers consume that human beings consume yeah they're no longer content. doing this it's buckets, not it's not, it's not everyone isn't sat around the television waiting yeah. for this. well nobody's sitting around the television actually right. waiting for anything like um that. and so the agency model hasn't been able to keep up with the shifting right. media habits of the sort of the human beings that's trying to engage yeah. and what i would say is when there was a shift from radio to tv yeah. it was still pretty predictable yeah it was just one medium to another. It is also or growing. an addition, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it and was, it, it was a natural growth, right? It's like almost seeing from adolescent to I don't know to adulthood kind right. of thing, right? Completely Whereas, agree, yeah. actually. And now it's so much more fragmented. So you just need a nimble approach to be able to test, learn, try out different pieces. Uh, not say I'm going to bank three million on one shoot yeah. that's going to yield yeah. a thirty second. Whereas why don't we just test with, you know, fifty? Yeah, and, 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 and why not, right? Right, and that's how it works. Is right. this kind of and the agencies that have been able to evolve and grow are those who have a model-based approach and yeah. who have teams set up where they don't have, yeah, six that layers where layers. you just need one or two. Yeah. And who do you think is getting it right? Because I thought that the agencies like Droga Five were getting it right, or Huge was getting it right, but it looks like they're tapering off too, right? So it almost looks like the digital agencies want to become offline, the offline agencies want to become social, yeah. the social agencies think they're in the business of content, right. you know? Yeah, it's 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 a great question and it's hard to say who's, I mean, I'm seeing smaller shops that are growing and they've, you know, duos have come out of agencies yeah. and set up their own groups and they're sort of working in the earned media space, yeah. you know, like day one agency is a, a group that who I, I love who they are really working and building business around it is great content it's yeah. a lot you know earn media understanding how PR and search works together yeah. understanding how a big idea drives conversations and then yeah. going from there versus we made a thing everyone talk about it's like what's everyone talking about how do we make a thing yeah um, I actually think Vayner Media is doing a great job in terms of combining paid media and understanding content and how you need to yeah. test and learn and working with smaller challenger brands um, I think there's some really interesting work being done with the direct to consumer brands and kind yeah. of startups if you look at yeah I like love Red Casper. Antler and okay. the, you Casper know, is one Casper's, of my favorite brands I have to say the I agencies, love the work they're doing the agencies that understand if I forget you, who works on Casper I that's Red Antler oh okay okay, okay. And I they love work, the work they're doing they work with um, a brand when it's literally in its infancy yeah, yeah. and the model is you know for um, revenue in terms of, or for actually taking some or equity, a percentage of, okay, okay, okay. You then get to grow, like build a brand and launch it. Uh, plus, you have some teeth in the game, right? So it's it's almost like it's because it's part of, it's now your baby too. You're right. now growing it like a village, right? So which explains 
how they had this amazing idea, which is about that whole almost like a sleep experiment thing that they've created, right? That you can actually go and see. It's, mm-hmm. So it's not so much about the mattress, but it's about sleep because that's yeah. your ultimate yeah. goal, right? I mean, the mattress is the means to the end, right. which is you look at something like that and say, now I understand why I continue to sweat in this industry because there is no other industry that can give you the big ideas that advertising does, right? I agree. Um, which brings me to social. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 years ago, I remember everyone thought, website forget it you know it's going to go out of business tomorrow right, you know right, right. what's a website we don't need a website uh to today uh people talk about the website before they talk about the physical store mm-hmm. people also i don't think 20 years ago when the iphone was launched thought that social would become so big right and i see uh, a parallel between the growth of social and how smart our phones are becoming mm-hmm. today our phones are more expensive than laptops right and it looks like I'm the only one shocked by it like I'm like you're paying more than your phone <laughs> so than you yeah, paying for so your true. MacBook Pro so like true. how is that not yeah. something to think about right uh, but I think like you said so more photographs more engagement more so yeah. it looks like social is almost becoming not a side entry door for brands anymore but a front entry door mm-hmm. do you see it I do and then I don't because I um, I think feel that where brands have got to is they've forgotten about the human behind yes. the social and you know yes. there's a human using the phone yes. and um, you know what we saw was this huge spike with Facebook's advanced targeting capabilities yes. like just put money behind it and it became you know it became like serving ads um, kind of in the Google um, yeah. no, PPC ads, world yes, and, yes, like, yes. and if you're all. trying to reach a human and you're yes. asking them to do something right. and you're expecting them to engage with this just because you put money behind it so that was kind of where we got right, to but right. then you know everything that's been happening with certainly in the US market yeah. you know overseas we can talk about that but I think what's what we're seeing now is this shift in yeah. um, perception of social platforms people starting to understand yeah. that Um, what they're doing on their phone, the time yeah. they're spending on platforms, this very polarized and sort of environment that we live in where public conversations can easily be trolled. It's so almost like a, what you're seeing is, is almost like a consciousness that is coming in from well, a consumer I th- perspective. I think that I'm seeing, and I, I mean, I'm biased in that I'm doing it myself. I'm doing it you myself. Know, I just kind of, people are retreating into safe groups yeah. I'll call my it. phone now tells me Gemma you have spent this much screen time on average depending on how I've done I either feel guilty or really good you yeah know? Well, so, that's, that's what I was saying to you earlier yeah. I just read um, Cal Newport's latest book and it's all about you know quality leisure time yeah and the time you spend with your phone and actually using it and in, intent intentionally versus yeah. just the scroll and um, I've been sort of living by some of the principles in his yeah. book for the past week or so and it's It's at first you're like, oh yeah, that's I would have just mindlessly scrolled for the 35 and minutes on the subway. Oh, like, 35 minutes! I would no. have said you suddenly know it's three in the morning. No, you're so, yeah, scrolling. or there's other times, yeah. you know, and it's like not having your device in your bedroom. Anyway, that, but that's yeah. kind of one thing. But I do see that, you know, I talked about Peloton earlier, which is interest yeah. groups on social around people who are exercising together. Yeah. It's a huge part. But then people who live close by or people like moms groups are huge on Facebook. Yeah. But it's going to a place where you know there's other people like you or with a similar interest to you yeah. so that you're not exposing yourself to, you know, these conflicting opinions and points of view. Yeah. And I think, you know, certainly the Facebook um, sort of public feed is ever changing. And then Zuckerberg himself called, yeah. talked about how he's shifting his platform's focus rather than the digital billboard, it's the yeah. digital living room he's calling yeah. it. And this kind of ability to connect across Facebook, WhatsApp, and obviously Instagram. not everyone agrees because a lot of people have left Facebook, right? A lot I would of people. Yeah, I would have thought it's almost like an exodus that is happening, right? Um, I also see privacy becoming a big deal, right? People are consciously shutting off. Uh, you know, we spoke about how we are the most connected generation ever, but also the most lonely. Um, and and it's not a you know it's almost like they're happening together, right? right. So. You are connected, but you feel like you're not one of them, which is something that social does. Yeah. Uh, brands, of course, are always looking for opportunities to, um, 
I would like to use the word shove themselves into the conversation. Mm -hmm. I think you gave a great analogy earlier. If you can talk about it, yeah, the yeah, party that you said. Yeah, I was I was saying how you know you have to listen to a conversation. Well, I think social listening is important. Yeah. Because if you go, I look at it like a party, and if you walked into a party and listened to the conversations and realized the ones where you were you were interested in participating in, or you could contribute to or you could be relevant those would yeah. be the ones you would join but if you walked into the party and you stood in the corner and started shouting yeah um you probably wouldn't however stay having very said long. that i see a lot of brands doing the shouting even today there are very few brands that i know who have understood that social is about interaction even though it's called social yes right and so i see a lot of brands who say buy me buy me yeah. or i'm 30% off it's the or it is great or sorry for the yeah. interruption or the flight is going to be 30 minutes late and they're not bothered about there's no yeah and know. that and that's um I, i the way i see it is that's symptomatic of the how you know advanced the targeting became so that yeah. well i can put money behind this so i can reach yeah. you know these six people so like, well, don't no are well, you not thinking yeah. about the role that the brand plays and yeah. you know brands do and can and should play a role in our lives and i actually yeah. think people are looking more to brands yes. with a clear purpose yeah. and who are authentic to, and to, who can be friends right to know, make change happen when you yeah. know some of the institutions yeah. around us are failing is it us, frustrating so. like because i think it's almost like the agency world doesn't understand the social aspect of it the brands are wondering how to uh look at ROI especially in the organic content more than you know there've been enough white papers on what is the what is the value of a like or you know so this is, it's crazy to me it doesn't need a white paper you know yeah. someone likes you they like you then they share you then you become part of the community yeah, yeah. but obviously finance departments don't think like that <laughs> yeah so is it like how's the because it's almost like there are not too many friends in the agency world for the social teams and there are not too many friends in the client world you know they just they are yeah i think it's about finding the right um the right place and then um finding a home for um a social campaign that's it truly really integrated again i mean right. what what i've seen over the past few years is you know when we started of building out social campaigns in agencies it really was this new thing yeah, yeah. we have to do social yeah. also <laughs> um and now it's like if this isn't a part of something that's more integrated so we're yeah. thinking about the human that we're trying to engage right. and you know we were talking about this earlier um that's how i look at it it's like what's who's the human or which are the humans and the groups of yeah. people and Where where do we have the right to yeah. into enter their world yeah. and what I channel? I love that. Where do we have the right to yeah. enter their world? And what where channel we... is that? It yes. might not be social. And I think that's right. to your your point is yeah. it's not always going to be social. It actually yeah. might be a beautifully crafted mailer. It might be the, the fearless girl in bronze. <laughs> it might be the bottom of the tray you put your shoes in yeah. when you go through security. Like yeah. it's it's. It, it's about just being smart about the moments and i think there's a laziness at times to yeah. default to like we'll just shove it on facebook yeah. or just do it on social so well why yeah and and you know when you see creative and then it's just kind of matching luggage and the yeah. um yeah that's when it's but you that's know, what you did with the fearless girl right because uh it did start off as a print ad and you you it, it really required i think some force of nature and just some over enthusiasm and drinking the food that you were talking about to say that no this is bigger right this is bigger and i think everybody who was part of the idea believed in the idea it was more than just selling a shampoo or so yep, or yeah, a yeah. fun right it's an important moment it is an important moment about, yeah. and it really did require the team to come together and yeah. be integrated in it right